D&D 5e's rules could be boiled down to one single word. Simple. If I were to boil them down to two words, I would say restrictively simple. But what if you could do anything without the rules getting in the way? Now I know that's a really weird statement because the point of D&D is that it is a sandbox TTRPG. The whole point is that you can do anything, make up the rules on the fly, right? But I think that there's more to that. If that was really the case, why is there such a huge market for homebrewing for D&D in order to make it work in different genres? Honestly, if you were to look it up, there are so many packages on how to run horror in D&D because D&D doesn't allow for that. Its rules are restrictive and only really allow for one specific type of playstyle, and you have to go out of your way to make everything work. Enter GURPS, otherwise known as the Generic Universal Roleplay System. Now, if you have heard about GURPS before, probably and most likely the first thing that you've heard is that GURPS is extremely crunchy and difficult to get through. This is only partially true. See, it is referred to as Generic Universal Roleplay System for a specific reason, and that's the fact that, well, honestly, it is very, very easy to use. Generic. But generic is usually something that comes with bad connotations, but not in this case. Generic for this just specifically means that you have the ability to use this game in anything. Any sort of genre. Sci-fi, western, pirates. You want to do a heist game? Go for it. You want to do something that is deeply entrenched in political intrigue? It's there for you. You want to do something that is high fantasy and heroic? Also there. Generic is basically used to describe the fact that it can do anything, but then we move to the universal portion. Every single one of these genres is played underneath the same rules. Let's talk about the difference between GURPS and D&D. It's ad spot time. Today's sponsor is Describe, an incredible digital library that allows dungeon masters to pick up things on the fly. If you need a sudden description of an encounter, you can simply look it up and find it. But today we're focusing on something a little bit more specific, their Sonic library. Not that kind of Sonic, or that one. I don't know if I'm gonna use that joke, but I recorded it just in case I wanted it. The Sonic Library allows you to choose a scene and then already have ambiance in place for it. If you've ever had a scene where you suddenly didn't have anything to throw in, you can look it up, get inspired, and there's already some sound down there that you can play that's going to give the ambiance you need for this unique encounter. Not only that, you can place all of these into different types of scenarios or playlists, meaning that you can have these all set aside for any time you need them as a dungeon master. Honestly, this is incredibly helpful, and I can't tell you how many times I've been running a game and I had to suddenly go and find an ambiance and just wasn't able to do it. This removes that middleman and allows you to simply keep players invested in the game, keeping the atmosphere at the table great and perfect. You can go check the links in the description, and if I have a discount code, I'll have put it in there. Let me know if I have a discount code, please. D&D is a D20 based system, meaning you use the D20 as the main role, and you do have a lot of other dice that you roll. You have your D8s, your D4s, your D6s, your D10s, etc. In GURPS, you're pretty much only going to use one kind of dice, and that is the D6. The D6 is used for almost everything, therefore, universal. You need to make a skill check? You're going to use the D6. Want to make an attack roll? D6. You're making a roll to survive against the very elements itself. You guessed it. D6. And that is the main difference when it comes to the core mechanics, because there are a lot of similarities, much like across any TTRPGs. The main difference for GURPS is it is much more focused on allowing the players to tell the type of story that they want, and allowing the GM to tell the type of story that they want, but there are a ton of rules. I mentioned earlier that it seems crunchy, like a lot of people have heard about GURPS, but they don't play it because it's simply too complicated. And that's not the truth, but there are a massive amount of rules in just the basic kit. The reason for that, however, is because GURPS is extremely flexible. I've used before in the past the idea of talking about D&D as if they were Duplo blocks, those large blocks used for children in order to first get familiar with the system. And then I explained Pathfinder as smaller little Lego blocks that you have to understand, but you can build much more complex structures with. If I were to continue with this same analogy, I think I would go ahead and refer to GURPS as connects. It gives you the ability to create extremely interesting structures, build an entire system, but that's the thing. You build it yourself. You do not have to use all the rules in the GURPS playbook. Instead, it is expected for you to find what's going to work at your table and then take those rules. This puts a lot of strain on the GM, but it does also allow you to play basically any kind of game you want. And there are a ton of supplements out there which allow you to build upon this. Do you want specifically sci-fi rules? Well, there is a sci-fi GURPS book out there. I guarantee it. Fantasy? Yep, that's there too. You want to play horror? Oh, you betcha. 
there's so much out there. And once you have done the grunt work of actually building everything up, that's when the game starts. So the actual initial cost of getting into GURPS is a lot higher than most, theoretically. Honestly, you can get just the core rulebook and do it yourself, but the GM is going to have to put in a ton of work of making this game work and the way that the players want. But once that's done, you no longer have to get frustrated with the rules because you built the game yourself. You get to decide what sort of things the players are going to do, what sort of roles they're going to make. There are tables in those books that allow you to decide what sort of environmental factors are going to be there. You get to choose basically everything. The game is designed to let you create your own tabletop roleplay game. And I think that is fascinating, but incredibly daunting. I think honestly, this is for advanced GMs and players who really have a lot of trust in their GM. Because the GM is going to put the most work into everything so that the players can enjoy the game that they've always wanted to play in. And I think that's super fun, but kind of terrifying. The other main difference between the two systems of D&D and GURPS is GURPS, well, they don't level up their characters. In fact, the, the entire point of the game is to, to level up but instead grow on your characters. In D&D, you take the system, you look at your characters, you choose your class, and you level up from there. In GURPS, every single character is point buy, but you have such a massive array of things you can buy with those points. You can buy skills, you can buy talents, you can buy spells. There is so much in front of you. So basically, you can create any kind of character you want because there's absolutely 100% no necessity to put yourself in an archetypal class. And this is great because it means you can take that spell slinging sword fighter and make it with ease. You don't have to worry about any of the multi-classing rules. Or say you want to create somebody who is just purely a silver tongue. They talk their way out of everything. They don't fight ever. They are just extremely good at convincing people to do those things. That's an option. You don't even have to build anything for combat if you don't want to, and the game supports that. Honestly, that is one of the largest strengths I would put in GURPS over D&D, is they actually took the time to create the three pillars properly. In D&D, we often hear about the three pillars of the game, combat, social encounters, and exploration. Except D&D really only focuses on two of those things, one of them way more than most. Combat is the central pillar for D&D. But GURPS has actually taken the time to provide rules for all three of those, and it is perfectly viable to create a only social character who's going to be very bad at combat, but is going to be very helpful otherwise. Now, the downside of that, it means that you can create your characters to be specialized in anything, which means if you do create that silver-tongued individual, you might not be able to do anything in combat, and you'll feel useless. Now, mind you, it is also incredibly common for the HP that you get when you first start to the game to stay at that level meaning combat will remain forever deadly. If you have a low health pool, well, that's your health pool, sorry. Meaning this is a much more gritty sort of situation, but some people are really looking for that. Honestly, when playing D&D, it feels like you're playing superheroes. When playing GURPS, depending on the type of game you play, but usually it feels like you're playing heroes, not superheroes, heroes striving to fight against the world and actually overcome things instead of just having massive powers. But mind you, it doesn't have to be that way. In GURPS, they actually allow you to choose how many points you want to give your players in order to create their characters. This means you can give them a massive amount of points and your players will be those superhero-like individuals because they can buy so many different things, so many different skills, abilities, and honestly, I think that's really cool. You can even buy your standing in society. You could choose to be extremely rich and have a lot of influence over the world, and that's one of your abilities. And I think that's really fun and a lot more nuanced than D&D. The other thing I really enjoy about GURPS is the fact that it actually allows you to take negative points. Now, I know that seems counterintuitive, but it's actually incredibly fun. What this means is it allows you to take weaknesses intentionally that will give you additional points to buy elsewhere. This means you could take points like being ugly, which means that the NPCs have a higher chance of not working with you. But this gives you more points to put into doing something like being extremely strong. This means you can play a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde sort of character. Whenever you're in your Hyde-like form, you're extremely strong, but nobody likes you. And so that's going to be a detriment to your party, and you have to work how to balance that out. The real problem I find with this is it's going to mess with min-maxers. Yes, it allows min-maxers to do everything they want, and I think a lot of people would have a lot of fun with that. The downside of this is what this does is it allows you to specialize too much, and unlike in D&D, there's so much more for you to do than just combat. There's so much for you to do in the whole game. There are rules for everything, and depending on what rules your DM has picked out and chosen to use, you could be useless in almost anything. So what does this mean? It means that GURPS is a game for the table, not the GM, not the players, everybody together. There must be an understanding of what you're all wanting to get out of the game. And honestly, if you have good communication, I think it's 
fascinating and extremely exciting. Yes, there is a lot that you have to put into in order to be able to start a game of GURPS. You have to get the rules set. You have to decide what traits everybody's allowed to take. You have to work together to figure out what sort of story you want. Hey, I want to create a character who can do all this. Is this actually going to be worth anything? But at the end of the day, it's all going to lead to an extremely exciting story that you know you're all on board for. And I just can't think of anything that gets me more excited than the idea of that. GURPS is made to create a true game with each other. Not just the story, but the game itself. And while there are some people who wouldn't be excited for that, and I don't blame them whatsoever, I personally am heavily considering running GURPS at my table because I think it's just so fun. Now, it's a lot more number crunchy than D&D, and I will fully admit that, so it's probably not the best for newer players. But again, you're all creating this game together, which means you can work to make sure that it works for everybody. And I think that is one of the best things you could possibly do at your table. Now, one of the other reasons you might want to jump into GURPS now is because they're actually considering making a fifth edition system. Now, there actually hasn't been an official announcement, and I'm going to admit that. However, if you go follow some of the designers, there's been a lot of talk about it, and they've been making some pretty large hints. And with all the D&D stuff going on, I can't imagine that they're not going to consider at least moving a little bit more into it. Steve Jackson Games, if you're watching this right now, you really should think about making a new edition. Hey, Jeff, we absolutely are watching. And while GURPS Talk is doing numbers, why don't y'all answer this question for us? No reason, just cuz. Now jumping into a new edition of a system can be a little bit exhausting. However, if you have actual experience in the previous edition, it works out pretty well. So I think now's the perfect time to begin to get familiar with it, figure out what you do and do not like about it, and check out 5th edition once they begin talking more about it and give us more information. Truthfully, I think there's so much you can learn about GURPS in the entire TTRPG system from GURPS. It's called Generic Universal Roleplay System, and I think generic has a very negative connotation, but in this case, it's extremely positive. It's generic because it allows you to play any genre, and the universal portion of it allows you to fit any type of rule you want into it. It is honestly very overwhelming for a lot of players and GMs first jumping into it, but it gives you so much freedom because it allows you to learn what you do and do not need from most types of stories in TTRPGs. It's honestly a masterclass in learning storytelling at a table. What do you need? What don't you need? What sort of tools are you going to need to tell the types of stories that you want? And I don't think there's a better system ready for it. If you consider D&D to be the most simple and generic in order to allow everybody to learn the game, I consider GURPS to be the next step in that. There's way more tools, way more numbers, much more confusing, but it allows you to learn so much more and get even more confident in the entire system. And I just can't think of a better way to learn TTRPGs and storytelling as a whole. If you want to hear me talk about other systems, you can go right here and watch the rest of the D&D Butt series and how many different TTRPGs I'm going to go over. Go out into the world, make it your own.